made some changes in our initial plan and I ordered some parts so long story short I'm not going to use this hose and I'm not going to use at least I don't think I am I'm not going to use the gauge I acquired a while back nor these valves that's too much of an unknown so I'm going to make my life a little easier and uh, just ordered a few parts from um, Let's see, McMaster Car. You guys are probably w uh, very well familiar with these folks that supply all manner of industrial grade tidbits. We have the following parts list so far. This is a three-way T. The male end is 3 8 NTPF. This will screw into the end of the pump. This is a Noshuk. Hey, look at that. It's made in Poland. Hey, that's cool. All right, let's see. How do you get in here? We've got a nice little gauge here. It goes up to 3,000 PSI, so that'll make our job easier. So this will, this will screw into the top of the uh, three-way T. The, the pump goes there. The gauge goes there. This adapter goes here which is a 3 8 down to something ah never mind this guy goes on top this is for the gauge this is for the gauge like that and this guy steps it down to i believe this is what they call a number six if i'm not mistaken fuel line so this will screw into here and then the fuel line We'll come in here, we'll go through this little flare, we'll butt up against that, and then your flare nut will go over the top of it, and that goes off to the fuel injector. Okay, so what's missing? The fuel injector line that goes from there to the injector, that's what I'm missing. It's on order currently, and it will be in in a couple of days. But in the meantime, what I want to do is just hook this stuff up to the pump, but I want to put a plug in this end to plug it up and I just want to see if the pump is going to build pressure. If it does, we're good to go. If it doesn't, we've got to rebuild the pump. So let's get busy. All right, we found a plug which I, uh, at the local big box retailer. Need a little room to twirl around there, don't we? Of course, let's clean up our mess. All right, first thing we're going to do is go ahead and put all of our adapters into our T so that we don't have to do it while it's on the... Uh, so we're going, to, we're going to start off by putting the plug in this end, which would normally go to the fuel injector because that part isn't here yet and then I'll put this uh, let's see which one goes where this one we leave out because that goes to the fuel injector this one goes to the gauge so let me do that off camera and we'll use a little bit of the tape to make sure our connections are tight so stand by all right we got our fitting and our plug in the end so let's go ahead and I got my little tape on there let's go ahead and put this into the pump again very awkward and ungainly and uh, let's see let's put the gauge in I put the <laughs> I put the gauge in first and then tried to put it into the pump and then I and I was like oh uh, 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 it won't work like that dummy now we can put the gauge on all right I think we're gonna do one more turn to get it nice and tight. We have our pump 
with our fitting and our plug and our gauge. And what we're going to do now is see if we can't build some pressure. I read the instructions on this pump earlier. If you had this thing hooked into a hydraulic cylinder, you would turn this counterclockwise all the way out, and you'd pump it a bunch of times, and you would that would basically get all the air out of the system. All right, let's make sure. I'm going to look back here and make sure we haven't leaked all of our fluid out by messing around with this pump. We still have a good bit left in there. It's at the bottom of the hole. So I'm not going to tighten it all the way. I'm going to loosen it just a touch. You tighten this, then it starts to build pressure. This pump works, folks. And then if we do this, look at that. Look at that. Cool. So you turn it counterclockwise, it releases the pressure. You turn it clockwise and then you pump the pressure up. Really simple, just like a jack. However, I did notice some seepage out of my, my uh, lug here. So that's a cast iron one. I bought a brass one too. Uh, why didn't you get it from McMaster Car? Well, because I forgot, that's why. Okay, let me put the brass one in there, see if I can get a better seal. All right, here we are, folks. I uh, took that cast iron plug out and put the brass one in because the threads are a lot better and got some tape on there. And we shouldn't be seeping, so let's tighten up our knob there, and let's see what we got for pressure. There we go. Now we're starting to make some pressure. I'm just, I'm not going to go crazy with this thing. So it doesn't take. I don't have to press very hard to send that thing up there. All right, so I'm just, I'm holding pressure on the pump, and um, which you know, if I let off like that and let it. It seems to seep downward, but really, I don't think that's an issue. So, there you go. I'm approaching the 2,000 PSI, which is what we want for the pop pressure uh, test. So, all right, this is good. This is very good. I do not have to rebuild this pump. It is a good pump. And I'm going to turn, turn that, let my pressure off. Bingo, bango. We are set. All we need now, folks, is for the salvage yard fuel injection line from another mercedes to arrive here at the garage and we can start doing some injector pop testing with our gruesomely overbuilt pop pressure testing setup so stay tuned for that folks that's all for now i just wanted to give you the lowdown on the proof of concept testing for our hydraulic hand pump pop pressure tester in a few days, our fuel injection line will arrive here at the shop and we can begin pop pressure testing on the old 300 SD. So, hey, listen, I appreciate you guys stopping by my channel. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. And if you'd like to be notified whenever I release a new video, don't forget to click that little bell down below. We'll talk to you guys real soon. Take it easy.